Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for today's discussion is on EMC test and measurement. This will be the part 32 series on EMC. The earlier on series discussion on EMC, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Thank you so much, guys. Let's go through some of the common EMC test facilities. There are six of them. Number one, open area test site, ship line, TEM cell, GTEM cell, semi adequate chamber, and last but not least, fully adequate chamber. Next slide, I'm going to show you some picture of all these six items here. Firstly, this is a semi adequate chamber. You can see that why this is called semi adequate is because on the ground, there are no absorber. If you put absorber on the ground, then this will be called full adequate chamber. Temp cell is a small version of this semi adequate chamber. The key constraint about this temp cell is the duty need to be very small, but it is much more affordable. Next, G temp cell. Okay, so G time self, what they do is basically they guide all the RF signal into one end in order to conduct the measurement. The key constraint is also the size of the DUT because the RF signal need to be guided to all the way to the tip of this G time self. Hence, the size of the DUT cannot be large. Next, we have this strip line. We also have this open area test site. Okay, so these are some of the picture taken on this open area test site. Okay, let's take a look over here. In most of the time, this open area test site okay, is actually at a rural area where there is actually not much activity or no much human activity going on here. So you can see that it's a, actually a very dense forest area where you actually clear in order to have your EMC test facilities. This is the turntable. This is the antenna. You can look clearly over here. So this is the turntable. This is your testing antenna. Okay, another picture to show the open area test site. In order to have a open area test site, okay, some defined area must be free of reflecting materials or other object that could influence the test result. Okay, so this is the picture that we see earlier on. This is where you put your EUT or DUT. This is your antenna. Okay, let's say the measurement that we want to conduct is 10 meter. So this D is 10 meter. So this length here, okay, we must have a clearance of 2 times 10, which is 20 meter, free of refracting material or other object. Okay, which means that at this 20 meter, you must not have any foreigner object in this area that is capable to reflect the signal. Okay, on the breath, okay, it's actually square root 3 times D. D again is 10 meter. So this is the size that you must actually ensure that no reflective material are allowed in this area. Okay, so let's go through some of the radiate emission problem with open area test site. For example, this is your DUT. Okay, it may hit the wall and the measurement actually conduct at the antenna. This is also visible. The DUT RF signal actually hit the ground okay, because this ground is a conductive material and some of them actually reflected back to the antenna. The only signal that we want to measure is this direct from the DUT to the antenna. We also have interference external amber signal, for example, the mobile radio broadcast, etc. Okay, so this is one of the key problems that we have
when we actually have an open area test site. So the solution is to use a chamber. Okay, ideally, okay, we need to have a wide open space in order to conduct the EMC test and measurement. This is the antenna. This is your duty. Ideally, everything is wide open. Nothing is actually within the area that I mentioned earlier on. However, in reality, okay, we got reflection. Okay, for example, this is your duty. It may reflect the tree and come back to the measuring antenna. It can also hit the ground and reflect it back to the antenna. Or even any living thing that is living nearby can okay, be reflected back and actually reach the antenna. We have all the interference everywhere. Okay, for example, this is a satellite communication. Okay, it may send a signal indirectly to the measuring antenna. We have people making a phone call or a base station that is nearby the open area test site. We need a good test environment without reflection and interference. So what should we do? Firstly, we can build a shield. Okay, so this is a shield. Okay, once we build a shield, okay, all the interference are kept outside. You can see from here, the satellite communication is not able to reach the antenna anymore. Same as the user on a mobile phone and also the base station. However, there will be reflection bouncing around inside. As you can see from here, there will be still even more reflection occur. So next, what we can do is we put on absorber. So once we have absorber, all the reflection are all taken away. And now what we have is basically the DUT direct path all the way to the antenna. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.